Uh, our next speaker is Dr. Hedir. Um, he has been teaching for seven years, and he is a thinker who thinks outside the box uh, in teaching math. He has re recently written a book. It's called Create Success, Unlocking the Potential of Urban Students. The release date is in January of 2011. Dr. Kadir uh, was Sacramento County's Teacher of the Year, and in November he was named California Teacher of the Year. Please welcome Dr. Kadir. Good afternoon, everybody. Can you guys hear me? Okay. As she said, uh, I'm Dr. Kadir Raja. I'm a teacher at Grant High School and also an instructional coach for the Turner Resistance. And I brought my students here. In a moment, we're going to introduce ourselves to you guys.
quote. Everybody can look at the quote. It says, Americans want their children to have good teachers, it seems, but they are not sure they want their children to become teachers. Does that, does that ring true, Carlos? Yeah. So, this, this basically describes my experience of how I got to teach. Right? My family, a lot of my peers, they did not want me to become a teacher. They wanted me to have a great, a great teacher, but not to become a teacher. Right? You know, but I had this conviction. I really wanted to help students that were at risk of dropping out, ending up in gangs, in jail. You know, I had this conviction. And I went against the grade, and I became a teacher. And I started teaching in 2004 in Oakland, in East Oakland. I taught history. And I used to explain the history in ways that my students understood it. I used to think out of the box, make the history relevant to their lives. I used to take the bus 40 down East 14, International Boulevard, go house to house to house with my students, and help them till 9 o'clock, 10 o'clock, late night, and make sure they can get an A in my history class. And I would probably spend a couple hundred dollars a month taking them to McDonald's, KFC, on 98th Avenue in East Oakland, <coughs> making sure that they would get an A on the test. And my students were always succeeding. You know, they were number one in my, in my history class. But check it out. Everybody liked me. The students, the principal, they liked what I was doing. My students were succeeding. But the principal, she, she didn't really like what I was doing because I had, you know, I had a relationship with my kids, I was teaching out of the box, she didn't really like me, and she got rid of me. She got rid of me from not only the school, but the entire district of Oakland. And that was in 2004. Damn. And then the parents and the students, they wrote letters and tried to get me back, but I was a temporary, it was my first year, so I was out of Oakland. And what happened was, I mean, so I was thinking, man, maybe my, my parents, my family, maybe they were right. Maybe teaching is not the profession where you can make a difference. Maybe you're not, you, you should not be a teacher, you know. But I held true to my conviction. I taught in a continuation school in Berkeley the following year, and then I came to Sacramento in 2006. And Craig Murray, Derek Simpson, and Twitter River District, they recognized my, my passion and my talent, and they let me be a teacher. You know, they helped groom me. And check this out. Six years later, from when I started, I sat in front of you as the California Teacher of the Year. <laughs> And that's, you know, about 400,000 teachers in California. And I guess the main, well, there's two major messages that I've learned from my experience, you know, going from getting fired to, you know, teacher there for the state. And I guess one of the messages that I've learned is that if our, if our mission is about helping people, about helping students, right, if our mission is noble, you know, we should stick to our convictions because eventually we will overcome obstacles. And we will win, we will succeed, because the people that we're trying to help, they will succeed. So we must stay true to our convictions. And the second thing that I've learned from my experience is to surround ourselves with people who are positive, who don't bring you down, who uplift you and promote the intention and the mission that you can really make a difference. You know, I had people like, like my uncle Ramanjo over there, Dr. Gallant, people like Mr. Agmar, all these different people that were positive. And they told me, no man, you gotta stick with it. You gotta stick with the mission. So I did. So, ladies and gentlemen, we have three goals today in the next you know, 30 to 5 minutes. Our first goal is to share a potential solution to a national crisis. The crisis that I'm talking about is the failure of our schools to especially educate our inner city children, our urban kids, right? Kids from low-income backgrounds, especially kids of color, kids with learning disabilities. You know, that's the crisis. The solution is, well, a potential solution to this crisis, ladies and gentlemen, is the create instructional model. Now the create instructional model is a model that I've developed through years of experience with my students. This model has helped me as a teacher to take students that have failed all their life with a history of failure, a history of despair, a history of a lack of motivation, rise to success. It has also helped me to close achievement gaps, income, racial, all kinds of achievement gaps, at an urban comprehensive school where we take all kids Kids who are not motivated, kids who don't have parents to fight for them. We take all kids. <coughs> now this creates a structural model. Number one, it will lead to success in any class. It can lead to success in any class. For any teacher, in any subject in America. If, I believe, the teacher takes personal responsibility for their student's success. That's the key. The teacher must take personal responsibility for their student's success. Number two, the teacher must exude this energy, this passion must come out. 
And then, any teacher in America can use this instructional model to address this crisis. So, and that's the book. Ladies and gentlemen, that is the Create, Create Success. It's the draft cover of the book that's coming out in January by SCD, and it details this instructional model that can be used in any classroom by any teacher. It will come out in January 3rd. The second goal is how do we promote greatness? How do we promote greatness as a society, as an institution? So that all teachers can be great. So that all teachers don't have to be Elijah. They don't have to use the creative model. But maybe they can find their own creatives. They can make it their own style. They can find greatness for themselves. How do we promote greatness? And number three, the students. I'm going to have two students come up here and they're going to share their personal stories in depth of what it was like to fail. I mean, to be in gangs, to be at Bristol, end up in jail, dropping out, hating school, to success. That's how we that's how, that's how plan. Okay, so our national challenge is addressing the achievement gap in all subjects. How do we get students that have been written off low income backgrounds, etc., to succeed in all subjects? But I'm going to share this creative model through the context of mathematics, since that's what I teach. But it's applicable to all subjects. So, and you can see I, I run around a lot. 88 years. Forgive me, forgive me. Let's just keep that. But it's okay, right? <laughs> Alright, so, why are we talking about math? Well, research shows that success in math is the best predictor of success in college and post high school. You know, it, it tells you how much money you're going to make. Success in math. But look what's going on in our schools, especially at the urban high school level. Ladies and gentlemen, algebra triggers more dropouts than any other subject. <laughs> Failing algebra triggers more dropouts than any other subject in America according to the superintendent of L.A. If you don't pass algebra by the ninth grade, you're 70% likely to drop out of high school. That's no joke. We have a serious, we have a serious epidemic that is widespread throughout the nation, especially in urban schools. Well, what's the implication? So what? Well, check it out. If you drop out, where do we end up? 82% of our prisoners in jail have no high school diploma. So perhaps there's a correlation between failing algebra and ending up in jail. The social and economic implications of failing math are huge. So, this next part, I'm going to briefly share some of the success that we've had for teachers and students through the Create Instructional Model. 